gay men and for what I do as a you know coaching mm -hmm. pati in particular gay guys yeah that our our lived experience is unique to us as a community you know mm -hmm. we don't share our minority status with our parents mm -hmm. we there's there's a lot of shame and um you know over the over the like generational shame that's kind of come down through yeah. you know there's there's a generation that grew up grew up through through the aids epidemic the, you know growing up through the 90s through mm. section 28 um you know every everything that's that's going on now with laws being repealed don't say gay but bill in america mm. chechnya you know all these things going on across the world that you know it's still illegal in countries across the world and punishable by death to yeah. be to be gay mm. you know there there is a lot tied in with how you are born yeah right and again that again that's i think you're born gay i don't think you get to choose yeah because i know from my experience and from a lot of people's experience uh, originally i would have chosen not to be gay yeah now i love being gay yeah like i'm very comfortable in my own skin mm -hmm. now but once upon a time that was not the case and i think our lived experience so we do look to each other for help the gay mm. community is important yeah and it's important that it's supportive and it's helpful and it's progressive and that doesn't mean that it has to be you know holier than thou no. and because you know we, we can go and do what we want to do but i think the the idea that there's a one size fits all mm. in any walk of life yeah. is preposterous yeah but it's so easy to get blindsided that especially with social media yeah you know especially when your for you page or your search page on instagram is just full of these idealistic yeah. um you know couples who look like they carved out a granite and yeah. they think they've got it all it's really easy to look at yourself and go i'm not that yeah i ain't got that well that's the bias as well of social media platforms themselves that the algorithm you know the meme where it says like lol that it took me 10 years to work out i was gay and it took tiktok all of three seconds <laughs> yeah. but like as soon as the algorithm on tiktok is like oh this is a gay guy suddenly your for you, for you page is full of topless guys dancing and these yeah as if that's what you want to see and like obviously we can all admire a nice body well, but it's like i, I mean, also have other interests <laughs> yeah but the th this is the thing right the algorithm brings up what people want yeah and it, that's why and you train it and that's why yeah but it's always that's why it's always full of people who are in great shape because mm -hmm. whether you're straight gay anything else man woman anybody else everybody wants to look and feel good mm. not to post everywhere everybody wants to be healthy mm. that is like an aspirational thing for everybody so that's why it comes up a lot and that's yeah. why it gets pushed on the algorithm and yeah but i think we're probably not going to change that. No, I don't think you know because th these social media giants are going to—that's yeah. how they work. They push it what works. But but what we what we I think what we want to do certainly with this podcast is maybe maybe you know ten x thinking. Yeah, um, is help. We should have just explained that by the way. <laughs> 10x thinking I is didn't a know strategy. What 10X thinking was. Oh, I learned at YouTube where they were like 10x thinking is what they use to discover new products that they Google can make and it's like think of an idea and times it by 10 and they're like you're never saying no to an idea even if it's stupid yeah. like you just say it as even, like even, as yeah, if, it even if it's so grandiose that yeah. it's it's like preposterous that yeah. you could but you just go yeah yeah you know that this podcast could be uh revolutionary and it could but I, you know I mean that'd be amazing, but yeah. as a minimum, what I'd love it to do is to start people thinking mm. that there's an uh, there's an alternative, yeah. rather than measuring success mm. in how many abs you can see yeah. and how many you know grinder hookups you can get, mm. or how many um, how much even how you know how much money you earn. That yeah. is, oh, it's on, so you know deeper more meaningful metrics yeah you know your health mm -hmm. your well-being mm -hmm. your connections you know, with other connection people, with other other people your friendships your what you do within a community whether that's the gay community whether that's your local community mm. you're a gamer and it's you get whatever it is yeah you know th that's that it's I, I feel like social media is so good and it's i'm 
I'm, I do think it's a force for good, and obviously it can be a bit of a double edged sword. Mm. But I think it, it, what it has done, which is a, a real bad thing, is that it's taken away new n- nuance, mm. and people think that something is this or it's this. Yeah. It's black or it's white. T- that two things can't be true at the same time. Yeah. It's either my thing is true or your thing is true, mm. and everything's like a zero sum game. I, I win, you lose, and yeah. it doesn't have to be like that. We can all win. Mm-hmm. There's lots of, you know, abundance mindset. There's lots of stuff to go around. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's, I think people need reminding of that. 